You're listening to WCTN. May we make a suggestion? Take your phone off the hook. Somebody might call during the next hour or so and interrupt your fun. Get it. Bigger guests, bigger audio. You're listening to the West Coast Truth with Russell Scott, Season 4. Canada has a harsh climate for any roof. Heat and humidity in the summers, rain and snow in the winters, and wind and hail just about any time of year. Time for a new roof or roof repair? Contact Roofix.ca. Roofix.ca takes great pride in the craftsmanship that goes into every one of our residential roofing projects. Call Roofix.ca at 604-565-1443 or visit www.roofix.ca. On tonight's program, from the Power of Prophecy Ministries, author, Tex Mars. Tex Mars, welcome to the West Coast Truth. Russell, glad to be with you today. For the people here on the West Coast and throughout North America, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Tex Mars? Well, first of all, I, I feel at home in Vancouver. It's one of the most beautiful cities uh, in the world. We sort of have a city here in Austin, Texas, uh, the capital that uh, a lot of people call uh, beautiful, but uh, you're very competitive. But of course, Canada is a great country. Uh, who is Tex Morris? Well, I, I don't know. I'm just really a small town boy from uh, East Texas, a very patriotic uh, American. At a very young age, Russell, I joined the Air Force, uh, and I, I never have regretted it. Uh, stayed uh, for a full career, became an uh, officer, uh, ended up teaching. Uh, uh, three universities, uh, including the University of Texas at Austin, uh, where, where I spent five years uh, teaching uh, American defense policy, uh, uh, things like that, political science, American government, uh, and so forth. Uh, and, and, you know, when I left the Air Force, actually I began a high-tech consulting firm and authored many books on high technology, for the layman, really. In fact, I wrote the first book, believe it or not, on personal robots. It's called the Personal Robot Book. It was the main selection of the Computer Book Club, mm -hmm. the Electronics Book Club, the whole thing. Uh, wrote a lot of books like that. Uh, and then uh, my wife and I really dedicated ourselves to the truth and to God. Uh, and in 1986, uh, we, we founded a ministry, and it sort of metamorphosed into what is now called Power of Prophecy Ministries. We have a publishing company called Rivercrest Publishing, published my books and those of others. Uh, I had three books that I didn't publish, others published, uh, mainstream Christian publishers. And uh, I was very blessed. They became number one international Christian best-selling books. And that sort of spiraled me off into the, the book business. Of course, I, I wrote secular books, uh, as I mentioned to you, on high technology. I wrote about a dozen books for uh, uh, the largest New York uh, publishers. But now I've been writing mostly books on futurism, uh, conspiracy, exposing what I believe to be the evil that's in this world and really trying to preserve our Constitution. And I, I put the, the Canada's uh, you know, document as well. Um, and, and the rights and privileges that we have uh, under God. And that's my real concern, and that's what I've been doing now, actually for about 25 years since we founded uh, our ministry and, of course, we also, I'm producer of 25 or 30. I've lost count, about 42 books now, and maybe 30 uh, DVD uh, video documentaries. My most recent book is Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star. Uh, and then my newest video is uh, a, a DVD called Die, America, Die. I don't really like the title very much, Russell. I don't want America to die, but the whole purpose of, of producing that video is to warn people 
that our 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 rights are being attacked. Uh, and and I, I'm absolutely convinced, and I document, that there are men and women who would like to see the United States, Canada, uh, and every freedom we have as human beings totally exterminated, a new world order, really a conspiratorial uh, Orwellian form of government. They're working very hard on this, and they put themselves together in various secret societies and groups, very, very evil uh, people who have no conscience, who I believe for the main part, are psychopaths, and I use that word, word very conservatively. I know what a psychopath is. Uh, I have also taught uh, psychology uh, at Park University, so I sort of looked in, in, into the meaning of such words at the time. Uh, so that's sort of who, who I am, uh, but you know, my roots really go back to that little town in East Texas, uh, and that's, that's really my calling then, uh, is to reach out to people uh, like me who are small town boys and girls, but who love their country, who love God, but most of all, they love the truth. Did something happen along the way, Tex, for you to change from being a secular author to the books that you write now? Yes, they, yes, they did. I, I don't, I don't want to be dramatic about it because, uh, I, in a way, I, I want to uphold God and, and not say, you know, this is, um, you know, the kind of thing that happened. But it did happen. Uh, mm -hmm. One and I, my wife and I, were going along real great. Uh, I was probably acknowledged as the top expert on high tech jobs in America because I wrote three or four straight books on uh, like careers in computers, careers with robots high-tech job finder for John Wiley Press and the largest publishers, suddenly one day my whole life sort of came apart at the scenes when one, they came back to the doctor's office and said, guess what, I've got cancer. Uh, and we, we had uh, some great momentous tragedies in our life. Uh, my wife has had cancer, let's see, four times. She has had both breasts removed. She had her uterus uh, removed. She also you know, came down with cancer of the uterus. Uh, my daughter, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't usually uh, tear up, but my daughter died of cancer uh, as well. So I, I think when these kind of things happen, you know, you, you look and say, what is, what is the most important thing in life? Is it, is it making money? Is it... Uh, uh, having a name and reputation and fame, what is the most important uh, thing in life? And I think it gives you also a, a look into uh, human beings, human tragedy. Uh, but, I, but I know this, you know, I'm 67 years old, Russell, and uh, I, I feel, you know, I'm good, I'm healthy, I'm doing great. And by the way, my, my wife, Wanda, is an iron woman. She, she, <laughs> she is still here and she's doing great. In fact, she's in the next office right now as I'm talking. Um, she's our, our treasurer, secretary treasurer, you might say, uh, of our ministry. She does a wonderful job. And, uh, you know, she's a little past the age of working, but, hey, she quit. She refuses to quit. Maybe that's why she's going to live forever, Russell. How many, members in your, to quit. how many members in your congregation, Tex? Well, the congregation, as far as our ministry office is here, we're very small. We have... Uh, Oh, let's see. Now we, we you know we contract everything out, all the printing of our books, manufacture manufacture of our tapes. We just sort of do the creative work here. So we have about seven or eight folks, including Wanda and I, that work right in the ministry. Now we have a a, a group called Bible Home Church that's like an internet church group, and it's for flung all over the world. And then you know as far as Power of Prophecy Ministries, uh, we have tens of thousands who are on our subscription list, who regularly get our newsletter. Uh, and then, hey, I don't even count the number. I guess you can go in and, and figure out how many hits you get every day and everything. But we have a radio program, Power of Prophecy, 24-7, seven, seven days a week, in other words, uh, on my website, powerofprophecy.com. So how many are in our congregation? Well, I, I would say probably 100,000, but uh, hmm. I don't want to overstate it. But we, we have a wonderful group of people who support the ministry, and many of them, by the way, from Canada, and I have been invited a number of times to go to Canada. In fact, I several times I thought they were going to kick me out of Canada. <laughs> Other groups that were opposed to me. 
Well, we're not as right wrong. wing up here. I... Well, you know, you're not. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of very fine people. As I said, they, in, they invited me. That tells something about their inclinations. <laughs> but I remember when I was up in the Winnipeg, mm-hmm. uh, Canada, which is also another pretty place. But, uh, boy, everything broke loose there. I had some witches group that went to the police and filed a complaint about me. A witches they said group? I was discriminat- yeah, I was discriminatory against witches. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then the, some Freemasonry group, you know, they said I had uh, blasphemed the Masons and all that. So they were, they were opposed to me. And uh, it was really interesting with all these groups opposed to me. And I was having a great time seeing the city and speaking at an old uh, historic church there called Calvary Church, uh, Russell. Had a real good time. But as we were driving around looking, I sort of got lost. You know, we had a rental car being all the way from Texas down here. And uh, I got lost in the city, and I probably looked like I was a bank robber, sort of somebody, you know, because I was looking all around and driving past these buildings. And uh, a policeman stopped me, and, uh, you know, I thought he'd probably look me up on the list. I must be on their bad list. All these complaints filed against me <laughs> by people that didn't like my, my views on things. Right. Uh, and I, that had never happened to me in the United States. But the cop was so friendly, he says, are you from out of town? I said, yes, I am, and I'm lost. He says, well, what are you looking for? And I told him the hotel we stayed in. He said, that's quite a distance, but I'll tell you what, since you're all the way from Texas, I'll just take you there. And, uh, you know, he, he led us right there, and then he got out of the car and shook my hands and said, I hope you have a wonderful trip mm-hmm. here. So, you know, we met people like that everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we had no problem at all. Listen, you mentioned the term New World Order. And I, I can't tell you how many people I've spoken to that use that phrase, new world order, sure. new world order. So when people use it, I don't really know what it means anymore. Well, you know, a lot of definition, you know, we could go into all the various groups that have, and you're absolutely correct, have used that from the Lucis Trust, which is an occult group mm-hmm. uh, that began to use it way back in the 50s uh, to uh, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, you know, president of the United States, who at the United Nations actually said that our objective is a new world order. And he said it was an ancient uh, dream. So evidently this has been around a long time. Uh, You have people like H.G. Wells who wrote a book, you know, the guy that gave us The Invisible Man, the science fiction writer, Mm -hmm. who who had a book called The uh, Open Conspiracy. And he talked about a new world order. But but the meaning He actually wrote a book called The New World Order as well. Uh, I didn't think that he did that, but he, but it was called the Open Conspiracy. I could be wrong about that. I, you know, I Hitler, know. of course, wrote his his book, The New Order, but it was a totally different subject. By the way, the interesting thing is, you you, you really don't have to guess what they're after. You you simply need to read their own literature. All these various groups, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission. What they really want is a borderless world, uh, a world where governments are sort of administrative units, I mean, like Canada and the United States, uh, where all religions come together as one, uh, where uh, th- there is a, a, a supra-government uh, at the top, really a strengthened United Nations that has vast uh, police powers, uh, an authority that can uh, decide who gets what, when, and how, uh, you know, already we have the United Nations as a World Food Authority. And the building that it operates from in Brussels, Belgium, I have a picture of it in one of my books, Days of Hunger, Days of Chaos, a World Food Authority, believe it or not. Uh, and, and the building that, that houses this, this authority is, it, it appears to be as big as the United States Pentagon, gigantic. So there, there are many uh, facets of the New World Order, but basically the coming together of all uh, power so that an international world government is presented. So it's a new world order in the sense that it, there will no longer be the nation states. Uh, but, but obviously then we would need a world leader at some point in time, a world taxing authority. Uh, the, consti- the individual constitutions and charter documents of the countries uh, would all have to uh, fall, fall away. And already we're seeing uh, a, a, a great coming together of various treaty systems and various organizations, you know, environmental authorities and 
all all that will come together. Yeah, it looks so, like everything is consolidating, including everything is consolidating, yeah, and including Europe. And... Of course, this is the cherry view. You know, world peace, love, and harmony will come to uh, uh, fruition. Mm -hmm. But of course, I think the best way to look at it is look at George Orwell's book, 1984, or Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. And there, I think you can see the reality uh, of what is going to come upon us if the dreams of these utopians uh, does come to pass. Are you an anti-Semite? That's a good question. <laughs> well, I, I've been called that. I have quite a bit to say about it. Well, let's do uh, it on the next segment so we get some okay, time. Okay, great, great. I'll be glad to answer that. Am I an anti-Semite? Wonderful question. <laughs> we'll be back okay. with... It's the question everybody loves to be asked, I'm sure. We'll be back in two minutes with Tex Mars. I it's a sin when I feel like I'm winning when I'm losing again. It's official. Green Construction has the lowest installation price on flooring in the greater Vancouver area. Transform your home or office from only $1 per square foot. At Green Construction, we guarantee our workmanship for life, and you don't pay a dime until the job is complete. Call 604-345-7626. That's 604-345-7626. Green Construction. Going green has never been easier. Tired of being told no? Tired of being told no smoking? Who wouldn't like a little freedom today? Want to smoke anywhere? I mean, anywhere? Then get Smokebot. No smoke, no smell, no unpleasant aftertaste. Smokebot equals freedom. The original Smokebot allows you the most realistic experience, but is a much healthier alternative to smoking tobacco and at about half the cost. Smokebot lets you smoke on the go because the premium kit comes with an on-the-go charger pack. Or charge your smoke bot in the car. You can even charge with your computer. Very convenient. Smoke bot smokes are equal to about a pack of cigarettes at a fraction of the cost. Ask for smoke bot at your local retailer or order online at www.thesmokebot.com. A lot more freedom. If you do smoke, smoke bot. Smokebot does not sell to anyone under 18. You should not smoke if you are nursing or pregnant. You should check with your doctor to see if a nicotine alternative is right for you. World Banking World Fraud, a must-read for anyone with a bank account. From a struggling young life as an orphan to a corporate nightmare of fraud, John Cruz in his new book describes his exceptional rise in the banking world and documents the systematic fraud and money laundering he uncovers while inside. What is really done with your identity? World Banking World Fraud, available now at Amazon.com. Learn the truth. We're marching to a faster pace. Look out, here comes the master race. Springtime for Hitler and Germany. We're back here with Tex Mars. Tex, I asked a big question. Are you an anti-Semite? You know, Russell, I say in my book, yes, I am an anti-Semite, as defined by the enemies of freedom of speech who don't want me to say anything but positive, wonderful things about Israel, uh, about the Jewish race, about uh, Israel's foreign policy, uh, and, and about uh, Israel lobbying groups in America. If you say anything about those kinds of subjects, that's negative, well, all of a sudden, you're an anti-Semite. So from, from that viewpoint, now, of course, I don't see myself as an anti-Semite. I'm just a lover of truth. Uh, I, I'm sure that I criticize my own country because I love it, the United States of America, much more than I've ever criticized any other nation because that's sort of my home, and you want to keep your home nice and clean and lovely, you know, so... <laughs> Uh, but but a lot of people do say yes, Tex Morris is anti-Semite because of the books uh, that I write. But you know when you when you look back, you know I made up a list and I've got it somewhere in my office of all the people who've been accused over the decades of being anti-Semites. And when you see the list, I'm in such great company. I mean the great industrialist Henry Ford, the the, the great aviator 
uh, Charles Lindbergh. I mean, the list goes on and on of people who have been accused of being uh, anti-Semite. The first time I was accused of being anti-Semite was I was on a radio program, and a person phoned in and said, you're a Christian, right? And they were just really, you know, indignant, Russell. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, yes. They said, you're not one of those nuts that thinks that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. I said, well, yes, I am. And <laughs> the person said, so Jews are going to go to hell. I said, well, no, not because of their race, but uh, not, I mean, the same thing for people from India and, you know, China and uh, everywhere. We all have the same opportunity. You know, God is is not a racist. He said, but Jews will go to hell, right? And I said, well, if they don't accept Jesus, the, there's the alternative. What? But it's not because they're Jews. And the guy hung up on me. You know, the next thing that happened to me was I got a letter from some Jewish group uh, organization that uh, told me how wrong that I was, and I was an anti-Semite, mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, they were going to uh, send uh, documentation on that radio show to a group out in California led by a guy named, uh, oh, I forget it, that doesn't matter now. Uh, but, but basically, they're going to keep records on me from now on because I'm an anti-Semite because I believe Jesus is the only way. So, <laughs> ever so since who's going to keep records, the government or some private organization? Oh, oh, no, the Jewish group there is going to keep records on me, they said. Yeah. And, of course, now the Jewish ADL does have records on me. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I'm sure APAC and Southern Poverty Law Center and all these groups, because of my, for example, my newest book, Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star, uh, in which I, I reveal the true meaning, the occult meaning, of the symbol on the uh, Israeli flag, the uh, Six-Pointed Star. But let me just state very bluntly, one of the main reasons I'm called an anti-Semite is because of the horrors that I see since 1948 with the nation of Israel oppressing the the native people of Palestine. I mean, they're basically, uh, I think it was, uh, was it Jimmy Carter who said that Palestine has become an open-air concentration camp? And that's exactly right. I mean, they, they, that they kill, they maul, they oppress, uh, they torture uh, the Palestinian people there. They've taken their land. All of those things I could go on and on. But what I just told you, which is true, I'm called an anti-Semite. So I say, well, call me whatever you want to. Truth is truth. You see, when you cannot debate somebody, when you can't debate facts, when you can't document your side of the argument, then you begin to call them names. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, as I said, I'm 67 years old now, and it was probably only the last decade when I began to write these books that I was called anti-Semite, uh, never before. So I just say, now, if that's what you want to call me, great. But, you see, if, if you stop your activities of truth, if you're, if you're frightened, and most people are, they're frightened to death of being called anti-Semite. Well, Russell, I'm not afraid. Call me whatever you want to. Truth is truth. But again, by the way, I mentioned Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter, a while ago. He, again, Jimmy Carter, you know, I'm not Democrat uh, mm -hmm. or liberal as he was. But you can not a better humanitarian, a person who truly cares for peace, who wants to help people, than President Jimmy Carter. And yet he is probably every day in America being called an anti-Semite by, by, by powerful Jewish organizations. Jimmy Carter is not an anti-Semite, so, but, but that's what he's called. So I say, hey, throw me into that briar patch if that's what you want to call me. I don't think of myself as an anti-Semite, but okay, I'll confess. If you define it by people who tell the truth, you know, I understand that, that some group uh, in Europe is now in trouble because, was it a group? In, I think it was because they mentioned uh, that a certain uh, political official was Jewish. Boy. And, and... They say you can't say who's Jewish and who's not. That's right. That's yeah. like profiling. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that ridiculous? You know, if you saw a guy robbing a bank and running out with a bag of money, and you call the police, and they say, well, tell us what he looked like. You say, no, I can't do that. I'm, I'm racially profiling. Mm -hmm. They say, well, why? Well, I can't, I can't do that. He's, and, you know, finally they find out that the man is black. 
or maybe he's white. But whatever the case, are you not racially profiling? Well, of course you are, idiot. <laughs> you have to tell the police who to look for. Right. It may be a, a 90 year old poor woman coming out of a grocery store with a bag. Uh, you know, a white woman or a black woman, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. So we have all of these, uh, these fakers out there that are calling people names. I say go to it. If, that, if that's all you've got to do, uh, but they dodge the truth and, and attempt to call people epithets and labels. So what? Is that not the tip-off that we're touching upon a truth when it's so toxic? I, I think so, Russell. You know, uh, I think people should be allowed to say anything. Now, if, if I harm someone, they can sue me for defamation, for libel, for slander. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I, I should not harm somebody by stating a falsehood about them. But if you're talking about world events or national affairs uh, or even racial affairs, it's your opinion. Now, if somebody were to tell me that black people are inferior to whites, I personally would disagree with them, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody told me that, uh, you see what I'm trying to say? Yes. Uh, even if somebody came up to me and said, I think we ought to kill every black person in the world, I don't agree with that. I think there are a lot of wonderful black people. I, I, I don't want to see them hurt. I have neighbors that are black. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't agree with that. But on the other hand, I would probably tell the guy, you know what, sir? You are a racist. You're a fool. I don't agree with you. But if you want to say that, that just shows how, what a fool you are. Is there any excuse for censorship? No. There, there's no excuse. We, we, have a, we should have a free nation. Uh, these are things that you should, uh, again, when I hear an untruth, I fight against it. But I don't, I don't try to put duct tape over their mouths. I don't, I don't want to send them to prison. You know, right now, uh, there are probably at least 100 people in prisons in some country across this planet, especially in c countries like uh, Germany and uh, Israel, mm -hmm. for supposedly denying the Holocaust. Now, it's interesting that most of the people that are convicted of this so-called hate crime, which is nothing but freedom of speech, they stated their opinion. Most of them did not really deny the Holocaust. They asked questions, like, did six million really die? Uh, they, 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 you know, and if you say no, 5,999,999, uh-oh, you're a Holocaust denier. Mm -hmm. That's right. You see one less than six million. So that number has been picked out of a hat, six million. And if you defy that number even, uh, so you can't even question the Holocaust. You can't ask questions about it. Uh, all of these, or you'll go to prison. And Canada has been guilty of that. We were, uh, we were uh, talking uh, about that during the break. We were. You know, a, a man named Ernie Zundel, yeah. uh, who I think is a, a fine gentleman. I don't agree with him and everything. He said, I don't think the Holocaust happened exactly the way. He said, I don't think there were any. I think specifically he said there were no gas chambers. He didn't deny that people were killed there or died there, but he denied that there were gas chambers, and he pointed to scientific evidence about that and said, I think there were some exaggerations, obviously. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing Mr. Zundel. Yeah. Bamo, he was kept for two or three years in a solitary uh, uh, prison cell by the Canadian authorities who finally shipped him off to Germany. Then he ended up spending, what, another six or seven years in prison for stating his opinion. Mm-hmm, yeah. Canadians, what what is wrong with you people that you're that you're doing this to people? I mean, if you don't like what Mr. Zundel said, or you don't like his opinion, well, state your own. Write a letter to the editor. Buy time on a TV show. Uh, whatever you want to do, write a book. Call him an idiot. You know, call him a dummy. It doesn't matter. You have your opinion. He's got his. Why should he go to prison and you run free for your opinion? So, aren't you concerned for your own freedom? Are you concerned about no, being I in prisons? Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't intend to go to Winnipeg or Vancouver again because they're nuts up there. They're wackos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're, but listen, they're the minority. Mm -hmm. They are the minority of Canadians. Why should they have the rule? The Canadians I, I met and I encountered, I interacted with, were lovely people. Mm -hmm. So why should I go up there and just a couple of complainants from the Jewish ADL or some other racist group has the authority to go to some stupid human rights commission and have you put in prison? 
Are you kidding me? What I mean, Canada, you're better than that. You're uh, not now, but you could be, and you <laughs> have historically been better. No, I think with that case, the Canadian and the American governments work together. Oh, absolutely. They put him in an airplane and shipped him from the state of Tennessee, and they rigged up charges. That was under Janet Reno, our attorney general, the wonderful woman who burned to death and suffocated all the children and the old men and women at Waco. Yeah, Miss Miss Butcher, the butcher herself, Janet Reno, she had her attorney general uh, go in and send a SWAT team. Mm-hmm. And poor old Ernie Zundel, you know, he's in his 70s. And, you know, he's <laughs> the, the guy, you know, I, I think he's a pacifist. I, I don't really believe he would even shoot a squirrel. But they had to send a squat team to grab the guy and um, extradite him to Canada, mm-hmm. where he spent several years in prison there, awaiting a hearing. And then finally they said he was a danger to humanity and, and because of his opinions. I, I mean, and, and by the way, you know, I, I knock, a lot of us knock the United Nations sometimes, sometimes Russell, mm-hmm. but the United Nations actually has a Declaration of Human Rights in which they say no one should be persecuted for their opinion. But Canada violates the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. Well, they violate and, the... and you're right, America did too in that instance, sure. and Germany did too by putting the man in prison. Well, we have our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We're all guaranteed the freedom of opinion, supposedly. That, that's Exactly, but as, as you just noted, and I noted, <laughs> America extradited a man for his opinion, Canada put him in jail, and then finally sent him to Germany. So we have three countries that are violating people's right to their own opinion. Um, So if I go to Canada, I'm assuming the authorities have me on some list, and they'll say, you're the bad guy that wrote a book. You said things. You can't say those kind of things. We're going to have to put you in jail. mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'd rather spend my time writing more books. If I went to jail, they probably wouldn't give me a pen and paper. They'd want to punish me by taking my what? A right to write. Opinions. No, they'd be aiding and abetting a hate crime if they gave you a pen and yeah, paper. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't know who I hate. Uh, you know, I don't hate anybody. Don't uh, worry, they I'm know. Old. They can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. They'll tell me. They know everything. There's such the, there's the geniuses. Yo. Let's get right into this book over the next segment Conspiracy of the Six Pointed Star. I'm really into okay. it. Okay. Great so We'll be back in two minutes with today's guest, Tex Mars. I'm gonna steal me a silver stallion With not a mark upon his silky hide Are you living in pain or discomfort? <laughs> Have you found that pharmaceuticals are doing more harm than good? MedPot Now provides an alternative solution to achieve a higher quality of life with the highest grade medical cannabis in the industry. All of our products are non-profit, chemical-free, and organically grown. Nice. Call 604-569-2119 or visit www.medpotnow.com. MedPot Now, the freedom to choose what works is finally in your hands. Sophisticated. Aerodynamic. Incredibly powerful, yet responsive lightweight handling, and with features others simply don't offer. Introducing the new Auric XL Platinum 9 Pound Upright. The power to go from zero to clean in minutes. Go online to buy or find an Auric dealer near you and find out how you can test drive the XL Platinum risk free for 30 days. Are you getting calls outside of your service area? Are you driving too much? Do you want to own a region? Take advantage of volume buying power? This is your opportunity. Lock out the competition now. Join gasfitter.ca and own your region. This is an excellent time for the service professional in the gas fitting business to become a reliable, referable associate with gasfitter.ca. Our system lets you work close to home, brings you the support of a network and freedom of self-employment. One source, one easy number, one triple eight. We gas for you, gasfitter.ca.
Okay, we're back here with Tex Mars. Tex, what is Zionism? It's different than Judaism, as I understand. You know, a lot of people believe it is different, but actually, uh, the religion of Judaism is Zionism. They're both one and the same. Um, and uh, that's a very common misconception. First of all, Judaism has a holy book. The most holy book it has is not the Old Testament, but a, a, vol a set of volumes that are really the sayings of the ancient rabbis, the wisdom of the rabbis, and they're called the Talmud. Uh, specifically and accurately, it's called the Babylonian Talmud. Now, this is what the rabbis study in their yeshivas, their religious academies, is the Talmud. Uh, and, and so we say, well, what does the Talmud teach? If this is their most, it, it actually gives the laws, the 613 laws of Judaism, and, the, and it comments and explains them. And one of them, one of the uh, rulings or one of the teachings you will find uh, is that, uh, that, that Jews are a superior race. This is in the Talmud. They are a superior race as different from other human beings, that is, Gentiles or non-Jews, uh, then insects and beast, the beast of the field are different. So they are the, 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 the like deities, and we are the, well, we're just beast. In fact, they say we are, non-Jews are goyim, which is a Hebrew word meaning animals. You, you may be surprised, Russell, look in the mirror this morning, <laughs> you are nothing but an animal, according to the Jewish rabbis. Now, another statement in there, and this was actually by the, the most famous rabbi of all time, Mammonides, and he states, the best of the Gentiles kill. It's acceptable, even encouraged, to kill Gentiles. Now you wonder why they kill so many Palestinians without mercy. Uh, and in, in fact, uh, one of the rabbi, top rabbis uh, in Israel put out a little booklet for all the armed forces, the Israeli defense forces, in which he said it is acceptable, it is even uh, part of Judaism, that you kill the Palestinians, including unarmed men, women, and children. So th this is part of the, the doctrine. Now, this, these are things are horrible to our conscience, to our way of thinking, certainly as Christians. But this is Judaism. Now, one of the parts of Judaism is that they believe they will someday control the whole world, uh, that, that, that the world will be run from Jerusalem, and there will be a, a, a utopia. Ra uh, a, a very famous rabbi named uh, Heidegger uh, wrote a, a book called The Jewish Utopia. He says uh, on that day when the Jews rule the whole world and they have conquered all things, uh, on that day all the rabbis who do not go along, excuse me, all the Gentiles who refuse to be servants to the Jews will be put to death. Think about that. that that's incredible. Uh, I mean, that, that, is, that is amazing. A and so Zionism has the same idea, that, that Jews really are a superior race, that God has chosen them, that God has uh, set forth that they will rule the whole world, but in the interim, they, ha they are given a certain piece of land in the Middle East. It is only their land, and they are only right to drive out all others without pay, or, you know, paying for the property that they steal. Uh, this is all part of Zionism. Uh, but, but no modern person can go along with this kind of nonsense and this kind of evil and hatred. So Judaism is a religion of, of very severe hatred of all races other than the Jewish race. Uh, and anyone who says, I'm superior because I'm God's chosen, by the way, this defies the New Testament and is a reason why the Jewish ADL and the others want to get rid of the New Testament because in the New Testament, in Galatians 3, the, there it says that there's, there's no difference in God's eyes between Jews and Gentiles. And as far as Christians, we are all one, whatever our race is, through Jesus Christ in faith to him. So in other words, we are taught as Christians, do not discriminate by race, but hold each person, you know, uh, in the highest uh, regard, because God is is not a, um, you know.
know, he, he doesn't separate people. He says, go into all the world and preach the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. All the world. Uh, and by the way, I think that's also true in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And the Jews miss it because they're so prejudiced and so full of hate that they just can't, uh, they can't understand. But remember Abraham, it says in the book of Genesis, the Jews say he is our father. Well, Jesus said, no, Abraham is not your father. And then he proved it. For one thing, Abraham was told by God, and that's in the book of Genesis, he would be a father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Right, as opposed to just Israel. Right. But Zionism really is a, a, a racist doctrine. In fact, it is the flip side of Nazism, of the Nazis. So they said the German people, the Aryan race, is the <coughs> superior race. The Jews say, no, we are the superior race. Mm -hmm. But the Bible, as a Christian, I say, shut up. <laughs> Judge a man by, you know, the, the, his, his character, by who he is, and not the color of his skin or his ethnic background. The Jews say, no, 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 we Jews are the superior God's chosen. We will have this land, and we don't have to pay for it. By the way, it's against the law in the nation of Israel to ever sell one inch of land. Just like there are cemeteries, you can't be, um, you can't go to, you can't go to the dead person. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, in fact, you've got to be an Orthodox Jew to be buried in all these Jewish cemeteries. Mm -hmm. uh, but there, there's a law also in Israel that says that you cannot give a person anything of value uh, in evangelizing them. So if I give you a Bible or a religious tract, they can put me in prison in Israel. Here again, they're trying to, to stifle. Mm -hmm. And, and perhaps persecute Christians. Spiritual fascism. Yeah, spiritual fascism is exactly what it is. In fact, uh, there's all kinds of stories now that come out all the time. You, go, you can go Google them up. Google up Jewish rabbis spit on Christians, old Jerusalem. Just type in those words. Mm -hmm. You'll see news stories coming from Israeli sources, okay, where it talks about Christians who visit the old city of Jerusalem or uh, often walk... These Jewish men, even groups of them, gangs of them, walk up to them, threaten them, and spit all over them. Can you? It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. If you're in the old, this old city of Jerusalem, you're a tourist, you're susceptible to being spit upon and threatened by the Jews. They say, you have no right to even be here in our city. Get out. So this is the hatred. And by the way, you know, the, the American pastor down in Florida... He wanted to take out the uh, Holy Quran of the Muslims and burn it. I would recommend, by the way, I really don't recommend this. I'm being tongue and cheap, mm -hmm. a cheek, Russell. But uh, if he's going to burn anything, he should burn the Jewish Talmud. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the Quran, which I do not believe in, but I have read and studied it, the Quran says that all races are equal before God. You know, the Quran doesn't discriminate by race. That's right. Mm -hmm. And there's other things I find objectionable in the Quran, but not that. But as far as the, think think about all the best of the Gentiles kill. And by the way, it also says in the, the Talmud of the Jews, their most holy book now, the one the Jews study the most in their religious academy, sort of like seminaries, you know. Mm -hmm. It also says that it's, that it's, a, it's acceptable, even a good thing, to cheat a Gentile at business, to defraud him. And and if you're a member of a jury, you should always find the Jew innocent, even if he's guilty. These are the kind of things that are that are found in the Talmud that are racist, discriminatory, fascist. Uh, I, I think the, rab the pastor in Florida ought to burn the Talmud. But you know the amazing thing? Oh. I, I, I did, did some research mm -hmm. on that pastor. I found out he's a Zionist. <laughs> he believes the Jews are God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the symbology, because that's okay. really what this book is about, is it not? The the six-pointed star? Uh, that's the beginning of the book, and then, of course, it stretches out from there. But but I think that is very interesting. Uh, now, the Bible actually talks about the, the star, and it's most interesting. And we're talking about the star of David here. The, the, well, it's, David never had that star, of course. Uh, he said his shield is God. His only shield was God. 
That was what David says in the Old Testament. So where did they get the star from? Uh, and of course, you, you discover that the star actually is talked about first in the book of Amos in the Old Testament. And that's when the, the Hebrews, they were called Hebrews at that time, of the people of Israel, betrayed God and went, as the Bible says, whoring after the old gods of Egypt and Babylon. They, they left the true God then and began to worship. And Amos says one of the gods they worship was Moloch, mm -hmm. the great god of fire. And his sign was the star. So the, the prophet Amos in the Old Testament says, and you worship the star of your god, Moloch. Wow. <laughs> Moloch was this beast god. And the Hebrews have said you actually, uh, the prophet Amos correctly accused the Jews, or the Hebrews at that time, he said, you even sacrificed your children to him by putting them in the fire, burning them to death. Now, the interesting thing is in the New Testament, in the book of Acts 6 and 7, the first Christian martyr Stephen also said the same thing about to the Jews. You know, they challenged Stephen and said, why are you preaching this Jesus? How dare you? And explain yourself. A, a great mob came up against Stephen in the streets there in Jerusalem, and Stephen preached a sermon to them in response. And he said, God rescued you out of Egypt and Babylon, but what did you do? You returned to the worship of the star, God. Wow. And isn't it amazing that, that 2,000 years later, 1948, they re refound, you might say, uh, a nation called is that they call Israel, and for their ensign, for their great symbol on their flag, the Jews placed the star. That's the of the god Moloch, the fire god, which whose name was Baal or, or really Satan. They worship Satan. Jews. And, and the interesting, me, let's just ask the question point blank. Yeah. Do Jews worship Lucifer? Yeah, I, I actually quote a very high-level uh, Jewish official. Uh, he was the chief legislative assistant to the Jewish U.S. Senator uh, Jacob Javits. I believe his name is Rosenthal uh, in my book. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, our God is Lucifer. Our God is Lucifer. When you really study the Jewish Kabbalah, which is another uh, set of uh, books, the primary one of which is called the Zohar, uh, you find that they actually worship a multiplicity of gods. Most people believe the Jews only worship the God of the Old Testament, mm -hmm. but that's not true. They have what they call the tree of life in the Jewish religion. And the rabbis say that there is a multiplicity of gods, but the two primary gods, uh, one is the God above and one is the God below. And they're both feminine and masculine aspects of the God Leviathan. Well, who is the, I mean, think about this. Jewish rabbis actually teaching in their synagogue, we worship the god Leviathan, and he has both feminine and masculine aspects. Now, that's, that, that would blow your mind right there to find that out. Mm -hmm. But then you, and by the way, I quote these famous rabbis in my book, Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star, because I don't want people to trust Tex Mars. Call Tex Mars a liar. Call me a faker. I don't care. <laughs> But at least the rabbis should know what their religion's all about. I, and, I, and I quote uh, the rabbis uh, in my book. Yep. But you can go to the book of Job in the Old Testament. It tells you about Leviathan. Essentially, he is the great serpent. He's Satan. He is the serpent. So uh, the <laughs> Jews, by the way, actually have a symbol. They call it the Ouroboros, the Jewish Kabbalist. Uh, and the Ouroboros is the great... Uh, serpent, and he's pictured in a, in a cir circle, and he's grasping or biting his own tail. So right. he's like an eternal bee. He's, he's well known among Jewish rabbis mm -hmm. who are deep into the Kabbalah. And remember, the Kabbalah is very, very uh, popular now. You know, everybody from Madonna, you know, the entertainer, <laughs> to Demi Moore, the uh, actress. Uh, I mean, even, even Bill Clinton, one of the ways you can tell that they're really into the Kabbalah is if they wear the little red uh, wristband, 
You're because kidding. they're big into colors and new numbers and all of that. You're kidding. That, that's right. And I was I was <laughs> seeing a, on TV mm-hmm. Bill Clinton, our former president, yeah. and he had a book out and he was signing autographs. And there he was wearing the the red um, you know wristband uh, around his wrist, and that means he's a student of the Kabbalah. The red color has a very specific meaning. Uh, and by the way, the Jewish Star of David, as they call it, which is even the rabbis say it's really not the Star of David. Uh, some people, you know, in the occult world, they worship that six-pointed star. They call it the hexagram, which is, say, uh, yes, that is our hexagram. The same, the same, very same symbol. Uh, and they use it to place hexes and curses on people. The Jews say it represents Israel. The witches say it represents our religious system, and we use it to place hexes, curses on people. That sort of gives you an idea of what the six-pointed star is. Now, if you look at the six-pointed star, you'll notice something interesting. You'll notice, uh, Russell, and this is a shocking thing when people hear it the first time, you'll notice that there are six uh, triangles, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, External triangles. That's right. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are also, let me see, I don't have it in front of me, but I'll have to go from memory here. Uh, there's also uh, six points. Mm-hmm. So you have six points, six triangles. And then inside, uh, the symbol inside has six sides to it. Yeah, it looks like the Pentagon. Yeah, exactly, the Pentagon. Yeah. So you have six sides there. You have six triangles and six uh, outer uh, points to the star. That comes to 666. Six, six. Now, you, you might say, well, Tex, that must just be coincidental. 666, six, six, that's the number of the beast. Well, now, wait, now, that's the New Testament. The mm-hmm. New Testament reveals that the number of the beast uh, who comes up out of the earth, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the man of perdition, who brings all hell on earth when he comes, you might say as head of the New World Order, that man, that evil being, that I think even the secular world knows about, they know about the number 666. Mm -hmm. But is there a connection to the Jews to that number? Or is this just a coincidence? Well, it's quite interesting. I've read a lot about this, and many of the rabbis quote, in their ancient literature, they quote a rabbi, for example, named Moses Hesud. H-A-Y-S-O-O-D. Uh, and Rabbi Hesud says of the number 666, remember the, the Jewish Kabbalists give great stock to numbers. Mm-hmm. But he says, and I quote him in my book, this uh, well-known, very historic rabbi, he says that the number 666 in, in the religion of Judaism, quote, and this is a quote, contains lofty messianic potential. In other words, the potential of being mess- messianic, our Messiah. He will have that number, in other words. Mm-hmm. Now, that's, that's sort of incredible. And by the way, I think that shows the power of God, because God said this number 666 will be the number of the beast, and it'll be the number of a man. Was it not uh, Emperor Nero's numerology, though? It, well, many people say that. I, I don't know about Nero. Yeah. Of course, others say, you know, that the peace sign was Nero's uh, a sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, the interesting thing about Nero, you know, is that that uh, historians say he converted to Judaism because he married a Jewish woman. And right. I, there again, we, we have a very interesting thing, you know. Mm-hmm. In fact, when I visited Rome, our tour guide talked about the fact that Nero actually owned the land where the Colosseum sat and stated uh, that that uh, he, he was uh, of the Jewish faith. And, you know, since he persecuted Christians so vilely, maybe this is an explanation for that, that horror that he, that he did against Christians. Did not uh, Karl Marx say that the worship of money was the worship of Lucifer? Well, you know, Karl Marx talked about the Jews. He said their, their God is cash, right. money. That's right. <laughs> so he, he wrote, in fact, I think I, I quote him extensively in my book, um, which maybe is not the nicest thing. But remember, Karl Marx himself was Jewish. Uh, and, and now we know, in, in my book, Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star, I reveal that Vladimir Lenin, uh, in his sidekick, uh, the monstrous uh, 
Leon Trotsky, uh, also was Jewish. And here's another fascinating thing, uh, Russell, for your audience that I disclose in the book. If you visit Red Square, remember the color red we're talking about? Yeah. Red Square. And by the way, the Bible talks about Satan being the red dragon, symbolically, red. Mm -hmm. And the early, uh, in 19... Uh, uh, 40, uh, 748, when they founded the nation of Israel, they operated from a building in Tel Aviv, set up the first Israeli government. They called it the Red House. <laughs> the reason why is all the early members of the Israeli government, including the, the pr first prime minister, David Ben-Gurion, were all Leninist Marxist communists. That's right. Yeah. In fact, uh, David Ben-Gurion, that was not his real name. He had a Polish Jewish name. He came from Poland. He was in the Communist Party. So, so uh, Israel, the nation of Israel, today's Israel, was founded by hardcore communists. And they didn't have any problem of all, uh, uh, at all in using a, a uh, murderous process of ethnic cleansing to drive out the Palestinians who had lived there for, well, over a thousand years. And, and that, ethnic cleansing is, is what really uh, took place uh, in Israel. The Palestinians call it the Nakba. But back to Red Square, visit the Lenin Museum. And there, you know, you have the famous body, petrified pickle, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> Vladimir Lenin, <laughs> laying in, uh, re, in repose in state. Uh, there's the Lenin Museum. The curator, who's like the director of the museum, now admits... And it, but has only been doing so for the last decade. He says, yes, Vladimir Lenin was a Jew, but it was a criminal act in Russia to acknowledge that before the fall of the Iron Curtain. They did not want anyone to know that it was the Jews who were the communists who overthrew the Tsar and set about, according to Alexander Solzhenitsyn, to murder 66 million people. I mean, we talk. We it, it's alleged that Hitler uh, and 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 his uh, concentration camp system mm -hmm. killed six million Jews. Yeah, there's that number again, six. <laughs> yeah, sixty-six million. Mm -hmm. Solzhenitsyn, you know, the famous guy who wrote the Gulag Archipelago, he spent ten years himself locked away in a prison mm -hmm. uh, camp with the Soviets. Right. Yeah. And, and but but by the way, most of the uh, even Solzhenitsyn says most of the commandants. Of the over 1,000, in fact, I think there's like two or 3,000 gulag camps in the Soviet Union. Think of the horror of that. And almost all of the camp commandants were Jews. And many of them were rabbis. And, and I'd like your audience to know something. This is true. These are the kind of secrets that I reveal in my book and my writings that make people call me, the Jews, call me an anti-Semite. Uh, an interesting... A fact is, the very first law passed by the rubber stamp uh, Soviet, uh, uh, you know, parliament, you might call it, they call it the People's Congress uh, in Moscow, the very first law passed was the Anti-Semitism Act. <laughs> you, you, you could be sent mm -hmm. to your death for even telling a joke about the Jews. I suppose you could tell all the Polak jokes you wanted, or maybe Canadian or American <laughs> jokes, but but no Jewish jokes. Right. Uh, or they, or, but think about that. Lenin, the first act he passed was the Anti-Semitism Act. I actually have a videotape showing Lenin giving a speech to the People's Congress in which he was praising them for passing their very first act, which was the act criminalizing anti-Semitism. And you know the man who, uh, the the the, uh, the Christian priest Sergius Nilus, who who gave the world he exposed the fact that there was this book called the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. Mm -hmm. One of the first things they also did was arrest him, and put him away in a prison cell and tortured him. Why? Well, he published the book Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion which exposed their Zionist plan for a global utopian dictatorship led by a Jewish king. For that, for that uh, crime, a, a, a Christian priest 
a great man of God, was tortured in prison by the Soviet Union. Again, these are secrets that we in the West are not supposed to know. You know, they've been covered up for so long. Why is it that Gorbachev and the, uh, had to come and the Iron Curtain fell before we, before Americans finally found out that Lenin and Trotsky, the two mass murderers who founded the communist state, using the theories of another Jew, uh, Karl Marx, all of them were Jews. In fact, there's a letter in the archives in the Soviet Union in which Vladimir Lenin, the dictator, sends a joint letter to all the rabbis in the country praising their efforts and say, and asking if they were not happy and pleased that the, the Christian church was being shut down. Uh, and, 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 of course, the fact is that the, the Jews all went unscathed uh, and were even given rewards. They were given the finest houses, the bank accounts, all these things the Jewish rabbis and the Jews were. They became leaders. Uh, 19 of the first 22 members of the Politburo, that's sort of like our presidential cabinet or your uh, ministerial cabinet, mm -hmm. uh, they, they uh, were Jews. 19 out of 22. And, and the interesting thing is that the Jews were favored because, after all, the Jews founded communism. Mm -hmm. They were favored until the 1930s when Stalin turned against them and began to persecute the Jews also. And th that's when they turned against Stalin. You know, they were very favorable. The Jews in America, they founded the Communist Party USA. But they, they turned unhappy uh, with Soviet communism when Joseph Stalin... Uh, turned against Jews as well as Gentiles and began to persecute them equally. They didn't like that. They loved Lenin, though. Man, we're we're way over on this segment. I got to stop you there. Oh my! But okay. that's okay. So we'll be back after this break with Tex Mars. On the next episode of the West Coast Truth with Russell Scott. Obamas and, and politicians like that are, are simply throwaways. Ronald Reagan was a classic example, a Holly, Hollywood B-grade movie actor who they put in. And uh, George Bush wrote his scripts largely while he was president for two terms. Played the part of the president for eight years. Yeah. <laughs> so you would say that high-ranking politicians really aren't that important. No, they don't, they don't determine policy. They just... Uh, uh, they're put in there to make a convincing argument for the policies that look at uh, follow the money. Look at who uh, who buy, bought the presidency for Barack Obama. Whoa, whoa, so you're telling me that Barack Obama doesn't run the United States? Oh, I, I'm hundred percent certain he doesn't run the United States. He's too busy on, on vacation or playing golf. Uh, Eisenhower was no match for Obama on that score. <laughs> the West Coast Truth with Russell Scott, season four. Hi. You know, I can save you 15% today if you open up a charge card account with us. Identity thieves never stop coming up with ways to steal from you. They can open up an account in your name and go on a serious spending spree. Do you have cufflinks? Mm -hmm. Gold ones? Not on our watch. We're LifeLock. Go to LifeLock.com and learn how our patented billion-point database can help protect you. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK today. LifeLock. Relentlessly protecting your identity. Experience instant relief with the UN Method. The UN Method is an innovative hands-off energetic technique that blends ancient Chinese temple healing and quantum biophysics with Western alternative modalities. Learn how to access the creative solutions provided by your intuition. For more information on upcoming classes, call Colette Stefan at 1-306-584-9135 or visit www.crystallinevision.com. We're back with Tex Mars. Tex, um, let's transition now from your book, Conspiracy of the Six-Pointed Star, to this DVD, Die America, Die. But first of all, where do people buy the book? Anyone who's into this stuff is going to be on cloud nine when they get this because this is an awesome awesome book so where can they buy well, thank you russell of course folks can go to my website powerofprophecy.com mm -hmm. or just use my name textmars.com 
That's T-E-X-E-M-A-R-R-S dot com. Uh, it's also available on Amazon.com. They can order it uh, and get the book. It's uh, available in print, of course, and uh, what is it, the Kindle, you know, where they get it electronically uh, mm-hmm. on Amazon.com. That is, uh, if we can get it back in Amazon.com, well, no, Die America Die, I'm sorry, is on uh, Amazon.com. It's, it's my book right now that Amazon doesn't want to carry uh, because uh, they're, I guess they're too afraid of it. Um, but anyway, Die America Die. Uh, is available on Amazon.com uh, or uh, you know, Power of Prophecy uh, dot com as well. Right, Brand and we have video. we have the book Conspiracy of the Six Point Star. On... Yeah, I got I sometimes get the two confused together. You know, right. they both came out approximately the same time this year. We've got the uh, book but... though at the bottom of my website, WestCoastTruth.com. You click on the image, well, it'll go you. directly to your website, Tex, and they can purchase thank it you. there. Thank okay. you very much. Die America dies a ninety minute uh, video. Mm-hmm. It, it really is quite different from Conspiracy of the Six-Point Star, of course, which uh, is a book of foreign, forbidden knowledge about Israel, the Jews, Zionism, and the Rothschilds, where Die, America, Die really tells the inside story and some truths about what is happening to the United States. When I say the United States, of course, I include all of uh, North America, uh, and by extension, maybe the whole world, uh, but certainly it, it, it goes right into the United States and covers many areas uh, of life. But there are, again, secrets that uh, I expose in this video that are not, were not known uh, until the video, many, many different things. And I think many people are you know, shaking their heads. And again, again, as with anything, I always invite people to research these things for themselves. When they do, they usually say to, back to me, uh, Russell, a text, you're not only right, but it's worse than you even say. Um, so maybe it's a conservative video in that sense. Well, your video is um, done in a way that, that promotes you to go educate yourself. It's not at all uh, an authoritarian speech by Tex Mars, and this is the way it is. This, you're just presenting yes, information. Yes, and one of, the, one of the things that I do in the, in the video, as you know yeah. uh, from uh, watching it, is that, that I actually give the documentation as I go along. You'll see copies of the New York Times and the Washington Post and Canadian newspapers and magazines and all that, and of course, uh, also foreign press. I use a lot of foreign sources. I found that uh, Canada and the United States are two of the most censored uh, countries in the world. We do not really have freedom of the press anymore. I find uh, incredible information in uh, uh, you know, London newspapers, The Guardian, The Independent, uh, and so forth. Uh, and you, know, you, you can also go to uh, India's newspapers, or Indonesia, China, uh, and you sort of put all the things together like an intelligence uh, agent did, uh, you know. And so you finally come to the truth of things, and you find that much of what we're being told, uh, of course, is a lie. Tex, is there a conspiracy to destroy the United States? Oh, absolutely, there is a conspiracy. Uh, and and the, the shame of it is is that uh, America is being beaten down, and it is by intent. Intent is it is on purpose. Our, our economy is being destroyed. The dollar is being demolished. Uh, of course, the religion has to go. Uh, Christianity is considered passe, uh, outmoded. Our constitution, our rights, what we have in the United States, uh, the, the, uh, the the Ten Amendments, the Bill of Rights, freedom of press, of religion, um, uh, you know, speech, and so forth. All of those things uh, are, are going out the window, and it, these are planned events. The right to keep and bury a, a, a bear, a arm, a firearm. Uh, everything is going out the window. But when people see this video and they discover that there is a an intentional plan, and at the end of that plan, the United States and Canada will be beat down. But there has already been chosen a great colossus nation to replace us, and that nation is Red China. China has is chosen. Uh, in fact, uh, I quote George Soros. The Hungarian billionaire, really he lives in America, uh, in England most of the time. Uh, he's been in the news a lot now, you know, for promoting the Occupy movement. Uh, he's one of the main found, uh, funders, uh, sponsors of the Occupy uh, movement, the demonstrations going on around the world. Mm-hmm. Very rich man, very liberal, uh, as part of the Democratic Party system in the United States. George Soros says this, he's quoted in my video, he states flat out, he says, China will lead the new world order, and Americans 
better not resist. Isn't this interesting, Russell? He threatens Americans. He says, you better not resist. China will lead the new world order. I, I discovered some interesting things that, that of course, the American uh, Secretary of the Treasury, our uh, Chairman of the Federal Reserve, Ben Bernanke, uh, all of these people, of course, are, first of all, Jewish. Uh, and, and, you have every that, person, and you have that on this great list on page 129 of your book. I like that. Yeah, on 129 of the book, I call it Swindler's List. But you take the United States, for example. Ben Bernanke is Jewish. Mm -hmm. He's chairman of the Fed Reserve Board. Almost all of the members of the Board of Governors of the Fed Reserve, which is really the money dictators of the world, they're all Jews. Uh, the, the head of the, the Director of Office of Management and Budget in the White House under Obama is Jeffrey Science, he's Jewish. The chief of staff of Obama uh, is Jacob Liu, uh, he's Jewish. Uh, and by the way, uh, Obama's, uh, President Obama's campaign manager, David Axelrod, is a Jew. Uh, all, all of the, 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 the financial support for both Romney, who's gonna run in the Republican party ticket, and Obama is Jewish. And, you know, you find out, that, and, and the banks that support them are all run by Jews. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, uh, and, and such uh, are the biggest contributors to Romney. And surprisingly, Obama as well. They don't care which party wins, mm -hmm. because they're going to control both sides. And this is, again, what I show in Die America, Die. But China has been chosen to be the great colossus. Uh, I, and, and that's why America is being beaten down. So we can be replaced by China. Now, why China? Okay? It, it, it did not surprise me to find that many of the richest men in the world are moving to China and taking up residence. Maury Strong of Canada, the billionaire who headed up the United Nations Environmental Program uh, and was head of the biggest water uh, uh, corporation uh, there in Canada, he is now living in a, in a huge mansion outside of Beijing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, one of the, the Bush brothers, Neil Bush, he lives, he frequents all the golf courses and the country clubs. In fact, he owns a country club uh, in Beijing, China. Do you know what city has the world's most billionaires? I, you know, I really don't. I would think it would be one of the Canadian cities, uh, possibly. Oh, you know, I did read that recently. It's one of the Chinese cities, isn't it? It's Moscow. Oh, Moscow. Yes. It, wow, it's, I was it's wrong. Moscow, it's Moscow number one, New York City number two. How right. interesting. Well, well, of course, I think you're going to find that those are Jews in, in each case. <laughs> Moscow, of course, would be the oil barons that are there. Right. Uh, and the natural gas uh, billionaires uh, that, that are in the, uh, Moscow. Uh, oil, oil, of course, is the greatest resource in the world. This is how China is being built up. I want to explain that something to the Canadians, because I know all of the Canadians are very interested. Of course, as people from the United States, the, the real secret to China's success is not their new capitalistic spirit. That's totally hokey. That's absolutely nonsense. Remember, remember this. You cannot mix oil and water. You can't mix communism and capitalism. So communism would have to be a rigid... Uh, incompetent and inept. And you saw what happened in the Soviet Union. It totally failed, imploded in, in itself, because the communist economic system uh, it cannot possibly work. Now, so you have the communist dictators at the top uh, in China, and, and so there's this mix of trying to bring in capitalism in, uh, mixed with the communism. It won't work. So how is China getting so rich? Now, China keeps expanding every year, galloping ahead, even as the Great Recession in the West unfolded beginning in 2008, China continued to grow in prosperity. How did that happen? Well, it's not from selling furniture and toys and consumer goods. In fact, we're really not buying much from China anymore compared to what we were buying. Uh, I mean, you know, Costco and Walmart and all of them. Uh, Europe is in another recession right now. And during this Great Recession, China could not sell all of its consumer goods, but they did have one thing to sell to the world. Guess what that was? That was oil. But when you study China's geography, you find out that China really doesn't have much in natural resources. Oh, they have some 
oil in the China Sea and off the Vietnam era, the, uh, area that they have still. But really, th it, there's not much to, in China. Don't they sell their oil to India? Oh, they do. And here's the key to this. What I discovered and was the first to um, put in my video, Die America Die, and I, I think people just, it was like, you know, the, the, that blew the top of their heads off. <laughs> I discovered for the first time ever that China, the Chinese National Oil Company, has teamed up with BP, the Israeli-British concern that's owned by Rothschild, mm -hmm. and BP and the China National Oil Company, CNOC, uh, that, by the way, it and Petro China, another firm, are in the top five oil companies in the world. Ten years ago, they were not in the top 100. Ten, now, think of that. Ten years ago, China did not have an oil company, corporation, in the top 100 of the world's oil companies. Now they have two in the top five. And one of them, get this now, the China National Oil Company teamed up with BP, and they're getting the majority of Iraq's oil. <laughs> now, Iraq is the world's second, some say first now, second at least. Uh, if you want to debate with me, okay, third. You know, again, it right. depends on the expert and the time of year uh, and, and how much is being produced. Regardless. But Iraq, it, there is no uh, doubt about it that Iraq is one of the greatest oil producers in the world now that we put Saddam Hussein to death and stole his oil. Well, you remember that Dick Cheney, our vice president, they had a, a plan that he worked with the oil companies about what was to happen after Saddam Hussein was conquered and the United States, along with some Canadian troops, uh, you know, had conquered and had taken over the oil fields of Iraq. Well, guess what? Guess who's getting all the oil? China. Now, over 4,000 American soldiers and some Canadians have died in Iraq so that China could have all their oil. Well, no, wait, let me be fair. As I, as I expose or unmask in my video, Die America Die, China National Oil Company is paying the grand total of $2 a barrel for Iraq's oil. Now, since it's on the world market now at about $100 a barrel, mm -hmm. Think about that. They're getting a profit of 50 times. That's, what, 5,000%? <laughs> I mean, $2 a barrel. Yeah, yeah, that's unbelievable. That's what they're paying to produce the oil, bring it up out of the ground. Now, how are they getting the oil to market? How does it go from Iraq to China? I actually show you uh, pictures of Chinese workers, Chinese oil field workers. And you see, first, the United States taxpayers, we were so thrilled to help Red China get all of Iraq's oil, that we built two huge pipelines. One of them already existed, but it was in a state of disrepair. We rebuilt it and built a brand new one. We used firms like KBR and Halliburton and, Sch and Schlumberger to build these huge pipelines that go uh, west across Iraq from its oil fields, its major oil fields in Rumela and, and elsewhere, and they go across to the northern part of Israel and the southern part of Lebanon. Thus, you see why Israel invaded Lebanon and captured the southern territories of Lebanon. Uh, and, and, and so what we have are two pipelines. They go across Israel and southern Lebanon, and they end in the Mediterranean there at, at, at near Haifa on the beaches there. And tankers come 24-7 to pick up the Iraqi oil and bring it over to China. But China lets some of them stop off in India and sells oil to India. And then the rest of it, China has built these incredible new gasoline refineries. They refine the gasoline, and then both gas and oil is sent on other tankers across the world. The United States, and I don't know about Canada, much of our oil now is bought from red China. Did you know that recently, when the price of gasoline, you know, uh, hit such a high level, $4 a gallon or so forth in the United mm -hmm. States, everybody was hollering and screaming, come to find out the refine. We, we have plenty of oil now coming out of the ground in America. And, of course, Canada has plenty, the oil sands and so forth. But, but the refineries on our East Coast and in California 
refuse to accept the American oil because they had contracts to buy from China and the Middle East. So we have so much oil. We're, our North America is like sitting on an ocean of oil. Mm -hmm. yep. it, will, it will never, it, uh, there is no such thing as peak oil. We know that now. Mm -hmm. And between Canada and the United States, you know, North and South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming and everything, and then down in Texas, they're finding all this new oil with new techniques, you know, fracking uh, and plant uh, uh, drilling. It, it's never ending. We've got thousands and thousands of years. But here's something that's interesting for you. To break down America, we have so much natural gas. They say the United States has more natural gas in the ground than any country on Earth. Did you know that until just this last week, the Obama administration and the Bush administration before it had forbidden American companies to export and sell oil overseas, <laughs> uh, natural gas, that is. Mm -hmm. China pays, uh, uh, Japan is desperate for natural gas. It has no natural resources of its own. China, uh, uh, Japan just closed down its last nuclear plant. And, you know, we can understand why after Fukushima. Right. <laughs> so Japan is desperate for natural gas mostly, but also oil. They are paying China $10 per cubic feet, I think it's the way it's measured. $10. Now, America is selling its natural gas for a, well, now, today, it was $2.42. That's only 25% as much as China. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They, the, the Obama administration would not allow any American oil company which has surpluses now. Every one of them have surpluses of natural gas. Mm -hmm. We don't even have enough storage tanks to put it in. And, and, and they would not allow the companies to sell to Japan. Japan would love to buy natural gas from us for 3 or 4 even 5 even 6 or $7. Sure. China we're, buys we're only it cheap getting, and sells it for a high price. Yeah, we're only getting a $2.42 today mm -hmm. for natural gas. China gets $10. <laughs> or Japan is having to pay it. I, I because, thought it was cheap to buy Chinese. What's going on? No, 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 no. No, no, no. They <laughs> jack up the price. In fact, if you buy uh, American oil, uh, not, not natural gas oil, uh, it's being sold for $70. But if you buy Chinese oil, they want a, a $120. Mm -hmm. But you have to buy from them because they won't let us export a lot of our oil. And that's because they're breaking us down and destroying us. And you know, uh, this big Keystone pipeline that Canada was going to build? Yes. And all, all these politicians in America said, we need the oil down here in America. Let's build this pipeline. Listen, the pipeline was not for the United States. It was going to go through the United States, go down to the Gulf of Mexico, okay, all the way through the United States, and then it was going to be sent by uh, ship tanker to where? To China. <laughs> China. And by the way, the United States government just gave Brazil billions of dollars <clears throat> aid money to build up even more the Brazilian Petrobras, you know, Petroleo Brazil. Mm -hmm. It's one of the largest oil companies in the world now, the, the Brazilian oil company. And we're giving them billions of dollars, lending them to, to produce more down there. But China got the contract for all the oil. So China, what, what, here's an interesting thing, too. Our government, the environmental crazies working with our government, which is hand-in-hand in, hand in this plot with China, they will, they will uh, it, it, it is an amazing thing what's going on, is all I can say. Uh, but, well, let me, let, me, let me go away from the oil thing, because I could go on and on about how, <laughs> uh, uh, what is really happening. Mm -hmm. But you see, we have not had a new gasoline refinery built in the United States since 1976. They won't let them build it. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Canada. But Red China has built 25 spanking new gasoline refineries in the last decade alone. How did they have the money to do it? Well, all that Iraqi oil. <laughs> and, and, and so... We can't, and, and by the way, refineries in America are shutting down. Conoco announced they're shutting theirs down. Mm -hmm. Sunoco shutting theirs down. 
Exxon Mobil is shutting one down. While we're shutting down our refineries, and the Americans and Canadians, Canadians won't have enough gasoline at the pump, mm-hmm. China's building up their refineries. And so the reason why is they will become the world's economic colossus, even though they're inefficient, inept, have a worthless system. Uh, in fact, you know, they build entire factories and then find out they're built wrong and just abandon them. It's, I've heard this. That's yep. what they're doing. It's true. Yep. Now, now I want to tell you another, another secret that you're not supposed to know is revealed in my video, Die America Die. We're down to less than two minutes here, Tex, so make it juicy. Well, I just want to let people know that China has built up a gigantic system. They went in and built over 100,000 warehouses. They were built by a bank, Goldman Sachs, the U.S. bank. It bought up the largest warehouse building company in the world, moved it to Red China, and they built all these warehouses, and they have bought up from Canada to the United States. China, aluminum, tin, lumber, uranium, every kind of resource you can imagine, and they're storing it in over 100,000 warehouses. What for? I think they're ready for some world calamity, and and they're going to be the ones in charge of it all. They have all the stocks of, of hard commodities uh, in, in China that we don't we no longer have. We've sold to them all these things. The Illuminati plan to murder America, confiscate its wealth, and make Red China leader of the New World Order. Die, America, die is the new DVD. Where do you buy this one, Tex? Sure, you can buy it at uh, Amazon.com, of course, or hopefully you can have our ministry because every cent goes by again. I don't accept any personal royalties. Uh, just uh, uh, Google up powerofprophecy.com, yeah. our website, and you'll see an ad for the both the book and the new video right there on our home page. Yeah, let's get people buying the books from your website directly as opposed to Amazon. Sound good? Well, that would be wonderful because, as I said, we push this the truth about the New World Order, uh, about patriotism, uh, and about freedom. But most of all, we stand for truth. Yeah, and this is relevant to Canadians as well. We have an audience throughout North America, but this, is, um, this isn't just for Americans, certainly not. No, it's, it's not. We're, we're really all, all in this together, uh, the United States and uh, in Canada. We're, we're really up against a great tragedy uh, that is developing now. I call it the quickening of evil, and uh, that's why I, I did Die, America, Die, and Conspiracy of the Six Point Story of the Book, to identify this evil. We need to know who the enemy is uh, before we can properly fight it. And I still have great hope. I have, I have great hope. I'm, I'm not a gloom and doomer. Uh, although I do see that the victory is going to be very costly, uh, and we're going to have to fight if we're going to keep our freedoms. I have a lot of respect for you, Tex, because it's not just the standard rhetoric with you. You name names. So uh, well, thank you, thank you very much. I've I've sort of, you know, 25 years uh, I've been doing this, and a lot of angry people. But you know, I've never been sued for uh, libel or, uh, you know, not telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Never been sued uh, one one time for that. So, and I don't think I, I will be. If it is, it's just it's going to be for just bullying and intimidation, and we're going to fight back over that too. But uh, 25 years we've told the truth, and that's very precious to me. You know, the Bible says, "You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free." You can't be free, a free people, a free person, without the truth. And that's the power of prophecy. Power of prophecy uh, ministries. Hey, it's, R- Russell, it's been so great being yeah. on your program. You're the you're the man of truth that has the courage to have Tex Morazone. I appreciate you for that. I'd like to have you on again. We only touched well, upon I, certain subjects today. Oh, I tell you, we didn't get into the Fed Reserve. I have a copy of their audit report. Man, the money that they have squandered, our taxpayer dollars given out to foreign banks and corporations mm-hmm. over in Europe and Asia, that is a scandal, the Fed Reserve. Tex, hopefully we'll have you back on the program. Thanks so much for your time today. God bless you, your ministry, and uh, your wonderful audience. And thank you, Tex, for being on the West Coast Truth. Mm